Now we have code that creates the model and runs the simulation. But you will see in the next video that it's a bit tedious to have the model code in the same live script that we will use to run the experiments. So what we are going to do in this video is create a separate function that runs the simulation. Now that function is actually not going to be a live script. It will be a regular MATLAB M file, but we're going to set it up to be a function. Now we've been using functions lots and lots of times, but so far all the functions that we've been using are built-in functions. So functions that come with MATLAB. We haven't yet created our own functions, but don't worry, creating your own function is really, really simple in MATLAB. And before telling you about how to create a function, I wanna say a few words about the differences between scripts and functions. Scripts are what we've been working with so far. So there are regular scripts and live scripts, but a script is just where you, you, know, you open up a new text file in the MATLAB editor and you start typing away. Now a function is the same in the sense that it's still just a regular text file with a .m extension. Well, okay, technically there are compiled functions with uh, different extensions, but that's something you'd learn about in an advanced course. The main differences are more in how scripts versus functions are used. So you'd use a, a script when you want more flexibility. So when you want to make lots of changes, so frequent changes to the code. Functions, on the other hand, should be treated as modular pieces of code where you don't make any changes to them, or maybe a few, but once you, once you write the function, you generally leave it fixed as is. Functions take inputs and they give outputs, whereas scripts don't take any inputs or outputs, they just create and work with variables and plots as needed. The architecture of a function looks like this. So we have the keyword function at the top and end at the bottom. And then after function, you list the outputs, however many outputs there are, and then equals the function name, so the name of the function, and then all the inputs, however many inputs you need into the function. And the function name should be the same as the name of the file. So the name of the file and the name of the function are the same. Then after the function definition, we have some comments here, and this is the help documentation. So this is what you would see in the command window when you type help function name. And then of course you have the body of the function and that's all the code that the function implements. Now, admittedly, this is not a terribly sophisticated, useful function, but you know, you get the idea. Now, there are more differences between scripts and functions. There's more ways to work with function inputs and outputs, but this is the basics and there's certainly enough for you to know for now. So when do you use scripts and when do you use functions? Well, you would use scripts to coordinate and organize your data analysis or your simulation code, whereas you would use a function if you need to run exactly the same code lots and lots of times. So imagine, for example, that you have 10 lines of code that you need to run 30 times. Now, if you would paste those 10 lines of code 30 times in the same script, then, well, then you have a few more things to learn before becoming a good programmer. So instead, you would put those 10 lines of code into a separate function. Scripts are also very easy to share. You can just email someone or post a script on GitHub or any other comparable website. Functions can also be easy to share because again, they're all also just text files. But you know, if you're creating 50 different functions in 50 different files spread out over 20 different folders and subfolders, then having a lot of functions can become annoying and uh, confusing. So with scripts, all of the code is literally just there right in front of you waiting for you to inspect. All you need to do is possibly scroll through it. Functions require a little bit more effort to inspect the code. All the code is still there, but it's in a separate file. The variable names might be different and so on. So the conclusion of all of this is that functions are a really powerful way to make your code better and faster and easier to work with. But 
having too many functions runs the risk of making your code confusing for yourself and more difficult for other people to use. Anyway, as you gain more experience with coding, you'll learn more about when functions are useful and when they become tedious and it's best to keep your code in a script. Anyway, so getting back to the goal of this video, the goal of this video is to convert the simulation code that we created in the previous video into a self-contained function that takes the set of parameters as an input using a structure. So this is going to be a structure variable called params where each field of the structure corresponds to all of the parameters for this simulated neuron. And the output of the function is going to be the membrane voltage potential of the simulated neuron over time. As always, feel free to pause the video now if you want to give it a go on your own. And otherwise, now I am going to uh, switch to MATLAB and you can watch me walk through my solution. Okay, so let's have a look at this file. Remember, I already opened this in the previous video. So this is called simulateadx.m. And we have the function call and we have end at the bottom of the file. And we have the output, the function name, and uh, of course this is the same as the name of the file, and the input params. So here we see lots of comments that tell us about how to use this function. So we have the inputs, tells us about the parameters, and we have the outputs, and uh, some more text here, which some yeah gives people some, some further reading. Okay, but right now this function doesn't do anything. So what we want to do is go back to the live script from the previous video and take all of the code from the simulation. So it's this entire cell. So I selected all of this code, press Control C to copy, and then in here, press Control V to paste. Now this is not yet going to work. And the, real, the reason why this is not yet going to work is because all of these variables here, these parameters of the model, are not actually defined inside this function. Even though we created these parameters in the live script, we haven't created them inside the function and inside a function, MATLAB only has access to the inputs into the function. So no problem, all we need to do is put a params dot in front of all of the parameters in here. So everywhere we see a parameter, we need to paste in, so I copied params dot, and now we paste in each of these parameters to be params dot vt in this case, or you know all, all any of these other parameters. So let's see, so it's a little bit tedious. You have to be pretty mindful going through this carefully, but otherwise it's not terribly difficult. Now v is a variable that we create inside this function. It doesn't come in from the parameter. Now one parameter that I haven't changed yet, or there's two that I haven't updated yet. One is what I previously called I input. However, when I look up to the help documentation up here, I say that this variable should be called params.input with lowercase input. So this needs to change from I capital I input to params.input. Furthermore, I haven't actually defined uh, time vec. So I haven't inputted time vec in here. You can see I don't specify time vec anywhere. So in the model itself, we don't actually care about the vector of time points. Instead, we just need to know how many time points there are minus one. So let's go back to the live script from the previous video to where we define the number of time points. You can see that the number of time points is the simulation duration divided by dt. So I'm gonna go back here and paste that in, and then this needs to be uh, params.simdir divided by params.dt. So again, you can see that it was not terribly difficult. However, it is a little bit tedious, so make sure that you're doing this mindfully and being careful of your work as you go along. Okay, now the last thing that I want to do is check that we see this nice helpful documentation when we type help 
simulate adx. So let's type down here, help simulate adx. Let's see. Huh, now this is actually just a little bit of text. So I'm a little bit surprised because we have all this really nice comments. You know, it took me a really long time to write out all this stuff. And why don't we see this here? Well, it turns out that what MATLAB is going to return is just the first set of comments. And as soon as you break the line, as soon as you have a line of code without a comment, then MATLAB is going to say, okay, this is the end of the comments for the function. So all we need to do is just delete that one line so that we have an unbroken succession of comment lines. And now we can type help simulate add x again. And now you see we get this really nice, long, very helpful help message. Very nice. So that is the end of this video where we converted our model simulation into a function. This is really useful for embedding the simulation inside a for loop so we can run some experiments. And that's what we're going to do in the next video.